Let's do uh, another video about the stories of Oman frankincense. And this one, we're going to talk about the difference between Oman frankincense and Somalia frankincense. There is a difference, and most of you who have used both of them can smell the difference, and also you use them in different ways. Um, so you can talk amongst yourselves to figure out which ways people like to use Oman frankincense especially. It costs a little bit more because the oleo gum resin costs more and the labor costs more in Oman. So let me first talk about the importance of high quality essential oils. I call the top hierarchy or there's four different grades of essential oils and I know this because I've worked in the essential oil and the fragrance industry and I know everything that they sell that they call essential oil. So everything that they call essential oils in the industry are listed right here. The highest grade is genuine grade. It is 100% pure and natural. It comes right from the distillation. Sometimes they take out water if there's a little bit of water in there but nothing else is added or subtracted away. The next lower grade is called manipulated grade. And what, the, what, what'll, what will happen in this case is they'll take an essential oil, let's say frankincense, and they'll add a different oil to that and, cheap, and make it a cheaper product and sell it as if it's 100% pure and natural, genuine grade, frankincense. Well, uh, there's a lot of that out there. Now notice that I created this pyramid style because there's, there's less of the genuine grade, more of the manipulated grade, and then by the time you get to the perfume grade, which is you take a natural essential oil and you add synthetic chemicals to make it smell better. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of perfume grade out there, and they sell it as if it's 100% pure and natural, genuine grade essential oil. And the price is high because they added these synthetics. So that's, that's not the worst. The worst is down here where you have totally synthetic grade. A very common one is wintergreen. In fact, over 80% of the wintergreen on the market is completely synthetic. And then they sell it as if it's 100% uh, natural at a higher price. So I wanted to give you that information because you need to know that the efforts that I went through to get Oman frankincense are efforts to make it up here pure and genuine, genuine grade essential oil. Now, for 5,000 years, this frankincense oleo gum resin has been shipped throughout the world. Now, what did the world mean at that time? It meant shipping it from what we call Oman and Yemen uh, by camels all the way across the Arabia uh, Peninsula next to the Red Sea and then going up here to Egypt, to Israel, and eventually the Silk Road would take even more of it across to Persia, Babylonia, and India and China. So that was the first way that they got the frankincense throughout the entire world. See, from here, it would also go by ships to Greece and Rome and other places. Camels are very important. Like I said before, there's more camels in Oman than there are people. And this is a photograph I took one morning when I woke up. I spent the night at a camel caravan um, tent. Uh, it was cold that night, but I got up early in the morning with the herders and took a bunch of photographs. They had 150 camels in this uh, for, for this the the old man the uh, that owned these. Well. Um, this is the old man that owned 150 camels. He even offered me 50 camels to, uh, for my daughter 
And uh, I said, how much is 50 camels worth? And we figured it out. It's probably two to five million dollars because some camels are very uh, expensive. But I told him no. And uh, anyway, I had a good time with, with him and his, uh, his nephew and his grand grandnephew, I guess is what you call it. Well, these camel caravans would cross the deserts packed with these frankincense oleo gum resins that were hardened because they were dried in the sun after they were harvested. And, and just the way they sell them in the markets today. And they were shipped across about 2,500 miles or more to certain locations. Once they traded um, the frankincense for other goods, then they took those goods back to Oman and Yemen, and that sustained the people. Well, later on, the Omanis, who are great sailors and also great shipbuilders, decided, well, we can take more frankincense in our ships and take them a farther distance. So they were able to trade quicker and uh, with less expense using these ships. And they took these ships all the way into the Red Sea to Egypt and Petra. They also took their ships to uh, Persia and also to India, to the, wet, to the um, Indonesia, into China, uh, Vietnam, etc. So they were great at shipbuilding and they were great at trading. These were smart people. Now, these green dots show you where frankincense trees grow. So this is the Arabian Peninsula, uh, current day Oman and Yemen, and the uh, sacred frankincense or Boswellia sacra trees grow right through this region, right close to the ocean, but on, in the mountainous areas and in the valleys where there's moisture from the monsoons that are created right here. This is all one species, Boswellia sacra. This down here, uh, there's actually two frankincense species that grow here in general, Boswellia carteri, which is like a cousin, a very distant cousin to um, Boswellia sacra. And they're old cousins because you can imagine these pieces of land at one time fitted together. This was up here, this was over here, and there's a um, rift valley that's forming right here, spreading this apart, and that's what formed the Red Sea. Well, so these populations of frankincense have been separated for a long time, long enough that they've taken on themselves different characteristics. They actually smell different. And so one of my responsibilities and as an analytical chemist was to figure out how they are different. What makes Oman frankincense different from Somalia frankincense? Well, I used a GCMS and I looked at the two reports. The reports look like this. And frankly, they look the same. And I was stumped. I thought, okay, well, let's see. Oman frankincense looks like Somalia frankincense, but they smell different. There still must be a difference in there. So I did some more research and I, I looked at the different molecules. This is the main component found in frankincense, both in the, from Oman and from Somalia. It's called alpha pinene. And alpha pinene smells like pine trees. That's why it got its name. It's the, it's the major component in conifers like pine essential oil. Well, many of these molecules are called monoterpenes are found in, in Oman frankincense and Somalia frankincense. And so, you know, they were the same. Like, there was not much of a difference. So, um, what you need to know is that most of the molecules that are found in Oman frankincense are called monoterpenes. They're very light molecules, smaller molecules. 
And then there's some oxygenated monoterpenes that make up about less than 10%. And then the ones that I love the most, sesquiterpenes. They represent only about 5% of the Oman frankincense. Now, sacred frankincense to me is more sacred because of this sesquiterpenes and actually the uh, bigger ones called diterpenes. The reason why we distill for eight hours is because we get more of these into the essential oil. That's why it's distilled eight hours instead of two or three hours. That's, the, that's one of the differences in the aroma and in the applications. Now, if you wanna look at these same molecules as little balls, the smallest molecules, the light ones are monoterpenes, the medium notes are oxygenated monoterpenes, and the heavy notes are sesquiterpenes. Well, watch what happens when you put it on your skin. This is what it looks like on your skin. This is the liquid portion, and this is what's in the air above your skin. Notice how after 60 minutes, the light ones, which are the, the solid dots, most of them are starting to evaporate, not only in the liquid that's on your skin, but on above it. After 120 minutes, where are those monoterpenes, those light notes? They're all gone. The aroma changes with time on your skin. It takes away some of that pininess. What's left over? These big, huge, heavy notes. They're called sesquiterpenes and diterpenes. They take over. They are very um, long-lasting molecules, and they also uh, put a person into a calm, relaxed state. And that's why a lot of people use Oman sacred frankincense for meditation and relaxation. Because after a short while, these dominate the aroma. Well, let's look at these molecules. Like um, molecules in essential oils are not of just one. Uh, sometimes they have a unique structure so that there's actually two. Now, in this case, we're looking at limonene. And they are mirror images. Imagine this being a mirror. And this one is looking at this one and saying, oh, the hydrogen is over here, the hydrogen is over here. Those are mirror images of each other. Now imagine my hands. They are mirror images of each other if you look at them. The thumbs are here. If you imagine a mirror right down the center. Okay, let's position these. Now when I take these and superimpose them, where are my thumbs? They're not in the same place. They're non-superimposable. They are two different types, just like my hands. I call this my left hand and this one my right hand. Well, there are left-handed molecules and right-handed molecules. Isn't that interesting? This is, what, this, is the, this is what helped me figure out the difference between uh, Oman frankincense and Somalia frankincense. Alpha pinene has two different forms, a left-hand version and a right-hand version. They are mere images of each other. Well, I found out the, what makes them different is because when you put the essential oil into some kind of container and shine what's called polarized light on it, the, the light interacts with the left-hand or the right-hand molecules and it eventually twists it, twists it in a positive or a negative direction depending upon the molecules that are in there. In this case, the light is coming here, and this one will cause the light to move this way, and this one will cause the light to move that way. Well, by recording which direction the light moves, we can tell something about what's in the essential oil. And in this case, let's look at the summary of the data. This is how many samples that we ran. The alpha pinene level was higher in Oman versus Somalia. This is not that big of a deal because if the resin is fresh, like the resin we used, 
you have higher alpha pinene. But if you let if you buy older resin, then much of the alpha pinene is evaporated, and so 48% is no big difference. It just means it was slightly older frankincense. This is the real key. This is what you need to know. The optical rotation, meaning when we pass the light through the oil, in the Oman oil, the light was shifted 30 degrees to the right, positive. And the Somalia frankincense was shifted to the left 13 degrees on average. Well, this right here shows that they are two different species. Why? Because there's more of, of the right-handed molecules in here and the left-handed molecules in there. And that's what makes, uh, in, in, in nature, things different, like a different species. So I had to use chiral GCMS. And the only thing that's different in GCMS is this chiral column that can distinguish between these left and right hand molecules. So in normal GCMS, these two molecules come out together as one component. But in chiral GCMS, the chiral column here will separate left and right handed molecules. And by looking at the left and right handed molecules, we see the difference in Oman and Somalia frankincense and why they smell different too. Here's the GCMS, uh, the chiral GCMS of Oman frankincense. Here's the minus alpha pinene, only 5%, the plus alpha pinene, 95%. Okay, well, that's great. Okay, this is where the positive since alpha pinene is the major component in Oman frankincense, all that optical rotation that's positive comes mainly from the positive alpha pinene. Now let's look at the chromatogram for the Somalian frankincense. Whoa, very different. <laughs> Al the minus alpha pinene actually represents 60%, and the positive alpha pinene represents only 40% of the alpha pinene. That's why they're different. Let's look at them back and forth, oops, back and forth. You see that difference? Well, that difference in the percentage of the minus versus the positive alpha pinene and the other monoterpenes that are found in there are exactly the same way. That's the difference in the aroma because minus alpha pinene has a different aroma, mostly a piney note. Uh, positive alpha pinene has a little bit of limony, uh, lemony note to it. They, they have a different aroma. That's what makes the entire essential oil smell different because of these differences. Now, how did they become different? Well, basically, enzymes in the plant, in the tree, that uh, are generated from the DNA. See, with many, many years of existence, DNA shifts. There's changes, and these changes basically create uh, different amounts of enzymes. So there's an enzyme that produces the left hand and an enzyme that produces the right hand. And if the enzyme... Uh, concentration changes that's created uh, or told to be created by the DNA, then this happens. Uh, more alpha, uh, minus alpha pinene than plus. And if there's more enzyme that creates the plus alpha pinene, then this is the situation that you get in. So it's really a matter of, of DNA. And if the DNA is different, they are different species. Now, these are not just uh, chemotypes. A chemotype is found like maybe in a valley here, a one unique valley, and it produces a little bit more limonene. 
And because uh, there are places like this, like in the eastern part of o in the w eastern part of Oman, there's a, a place called Hasik, and the, um, the limonene content is about ten or twelve percent, and this is cherished and loved by the by the people there. And so we we do get some of this Hasik. Uh, um, Oman frankincense, but we also purchase it from other other areas. But chemotypes are usually found within certain locations that are very isolated, but these are different species because of the different chemical makeup. And we know that because of the aromas. So there's chemotypes. Uh, right now, you cannot find, well, in, in a way, I guess you do. You can buy Hasek uh, frankincense from Oman, and you can buy other types, but they're not very common. You actually have to go to Oman to get those. Um, right now, I know of one source who uh, collects frankincense in Somalia from certain locations because of the same thing. It has high uh, limonene content, and he sells that only to uh, help make perfumes, believe it or not. So, okay, well, my final goal was to make a farm, a frankincense farm, uh, and a distillery. This distillery that you see back here actually has three stills in it, the same type that I had before with a slight a different condenser. Believe it or not, this was a chicken coop. <laughs> we cleaned it out. Uh, we put tile in the back. Uh, it was great for a distillery because like a chicken coop, it had wire on the front, wire on the sides, and a cement back. And the heat from the distillation would leave the distillery. It had a nice cement floor. So we had, uh, we had uh, uh, two, eight, three acres, uh, about one hectare and we planted frankincense trees and other flowers. Even the Sultan of Oman sent us his personal gardeners with flowers to plant throughout our uh, frankincense farm because he knew what was going on. He followed our, our activities. And no matter, there were many times when I was working in Oman, I traveled there 11 times and stayed there 30 days each time. So I nearly spent a whole year within four years in Oman. So I got to know the culture, uh, get to know the people. I didn't get to know the language very well, enough to get into the shop and get a good deal. I knew how to do that. But um, I loved Oman. You would love it too. It's a very safe place to travel. Um, you can go dress the way you are. Men and women, you, there's nothing special uh, unless you go into the mosque. So with that, I want to remind you, I do have uh, an essential oil course. It's online. It's called Everyday Essential Oils. And it's actually two courses in one. It's got a companion course that I add other things to. Like I just added seven video lessons on GCMS optical rotation, chirality, chiral GCMS. Um, I want you to be able to understand the, uh, these instruments that are used by the best essential oil companies so that the, the quality of the essential oil can either be determined or be verified. So again, this course 42 video lessons. You can study it at your own pace. I have people that take, can have finished it in three days, and I have people that are still working on it after four and a half months. And that's okay. I don't care if it takes them a whole year to take and graduate from the course. But you can watch these videos on your phone, laptop, computer, or tablet. And it has lifetime access. You can just keep watching it over and over again for a review. Right now, you can get $25 off for the next 100 new students. And the coupon code for that is 25 off. 
So now it's only $72. <laughs> $72, that's less than $2 a lesson. I teach you at least two concepts in each lesson. And I want you to master those two concepts. That shows up in the final exam and in the quizzes that I have. The final exam is 40 questions. You can take it over and over. Once you pass it, you graduate. So you can go there by going to exploringeo.co backslash p backslash everyday eo bundle. And if you'll go there, you can see an example of lessons. You can watch a couple of lessons free. You can see the table of contents. I, don't, I, I want you to be able to say, okay, I like this course. I can learn something from Dr. Woolley. So here in this case, I'm teaching about emotions. I have some great uh, visuals about emotions to help you understand how essential oils affect emotions and which ones affect, uh, help, help you uh, channel your emotions to uh, calm and serenity and which essential oils channel your emotions towards uh, vibrancy or happiness or cheerfulness. Uh, this is a list of the students that have graduated from the course so far, as you can see. Hong Kong, USA, Canada, Australia, Poland, Malaysia, Norway, um, more Malaysia, more Canada, India, um, Netherlands, Czech Republic. There's a lot of people that take this course that English is not their first language, but they want to learn the language of essential oils. And I am a good teacher. I try to speak slowly and carefully so that you understand at least the two concepts found in each lesson. And I'm really proud, especially of these uh, graduates who have passed the course and English was not their primary language. So I highly recommend this course for anybody, especially new people who are just getting into essential oils. You know, somebody has to be a trainer, so I decided I could train on essential oils. So go to my course, again, at uh, exploringeo.co. Go there and you can find my uh, essential everyday EO bundle. And with that, oops, with that, I'll say goodbye. Um, that's the end of this section of the frankincense, Oman frankincense story. I'll have, I'll have some more stories that I'll put up regarding Oman frankincense and the stories where I spent basically one year out of four years in Oman uh, working for you so that you could have Oman sacred frankincense.